It's a bi week Breakfast with Ben's podcast with Joe Rudder, beat writer for the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, covering the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers off this weekend, then they get the Cleveland Browns now sitting at 3-3 three and three after the win against the Seattle Seahawks over the weekend. We'll see what record the Browns have going in. They take on the Denver Broncos on Thursday night. Kind of a weird situation, Joe, in the sense that, you know, it would be easy for these coaches to just have the extra couple days, sit at home, watch the game, then start cutting up the tape way in advance. It's a team that they're vastly familiar with, obviously, in Cleveland. But then again, they're not going to have any idea who's going to be playing not only Thursday, but in all likelihood by the time they play them again on Sunday. Talk about the Steelers' injuries that they're concerned about. Cleveland's banged up beyond recognition. Yeah, and it just came out today that Nick Chubb's not going to play, so I guess you're down to running back number three, whoever that is. And uh, so now you, if you're the Steelers, you know you're not going to have Kareem Hunt in two weeks to face. You may have Nick Chubb. That might be enough time for him to come back. But, yeah, you've got a whole different look. You know, Their offensive line's been banged up. Their receivers are Both banged tackles. up. tackles. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quarterback has been injured so you know you've got they've got a lot of things to 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 look at here and a lot of different components that they're not used to and it would have been even nicer that they get a team that the Steelers just played in Denver it could have a nice reference point uh not that they necessarily need it again because they're playing Cleveland but uh just a lot of variables going into this weekend and Actually, not as many variables surrounding the Steelers going into the bye and coming out of it. One of them might be Stephon Tewitt. I guess another is Zach Banner. What's your feel on where those guys are in terms of their return after the off weekend? I mean, that's you know, you would like to think that Zach Banner will start getting out on the field. Depends on how he's recovering from this uh, knee surgery he had. Um, I think you're going to see more likely Anthony McFarland be back doing something, which we didn't get to ask Mike Tomlin about today, but he, he has to be activated, I think, by next Tuesday for him to come back off injured reserve, and he's been out there practicing. Uh, Banner, I, you know, he's going to be, you know, I expect them when they come back here Monday that he'll be on the field and probably taking first-team reps at one of the tackle spots. Um, we don't know how, you know, the availability of Dan Moore yet because they didn't, you know, mention his injury coming off the game either, so you know, Chooks could go back to the left side, or Dan Moore could be on the left side, but I believe Zach Banner will probably be somewhere you know, on, he'll be on the right, you know, right tackle. It's just a matter of what who they have on the left side. So I think those are things we can look forward to. Stephon to it. I still think it's a longer term project. Maybe not until you know, maybe say week eight or week nine, because he, you know, he's got to get back to practicing first. Once they open that three week window, and you know, he's been other than doing a limited, limited amount of conditioning, he hasn't been seen at all. On the Steelers, I don't overthink this tackle situation. I mean, you made the efforts to keep Banner. The plan was to have him be the right tackle and Chooks was going to be the left tackle. You waited until the fourth round to get another tackle. Dan Moore was better than they first thought when he got here. What was Mike Tomlin's phrase? The floor is higher than we thought it might be. But he wasn't Anthony Munoz or Jonathan Ogden for the first six games. He was good enough to be part of three wins. I don't think he was the main reason why in any of them. He was bad enough to be part of three losses. I don't think he was the main reason why they were as bad as they were along the offensive line. But he's a rookie who you got some reps out of and gave quality experience to. Now go back to what you thought it was going to be in the offseason. Yeah, you know, and they've always viewed Chuk's core four as a more of a natural left tackle. But he didn't do much in the preseason, and then moving him back to the right side we played last year. He, you know, until the Denver game, he really hadn't done much um, to really, you know, you know, show that he was ready to take that step, or you know, worthy of a guy who's going to be a free agent next year and get another contract. You know, so maybe they try to get him back to the left side. I agree with that. I, you know, especially with Dan Moore coming off an injury, that's a you have a ready-made excuse there that Dan Moore sits. You got Chooks back on the left side. You got more veteran guys out there. You got Banner on the right side, who's a natural right tackle. That should be the way they go. But, you know, if they're dissatisfied with Chooks of Core for, they, you know, maybe go with Haig or Dan Moore. But I would likely think Chooks is out there. And the two it thing, that's becoming a problem, I think. It's hurting them in the run game, A. Yep. B. It's hurting them because he plays in front of TJ Watt. And now Watt is running the gamut every time he tries to get to the quarterback you know I guess Cam Hayworth's talking about how TJ was sort of grousing about how hard it was to get home at one point he finally did but you know you can't hold him down for so long as Seattle found out and as that game went along he got better 
but it might be nice if you could get a strip sack, say, in the first quarter, and that yeah. gives the Steelers a cheap touchdown so they don't need it at the last minute for a field goal to win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and two, it helps a lot in that context. Yeah, and one thing that's been a kind of a trend here, and I think it's three of the last four games, they've allowed the team to get second-half kickoff, get down and score points, either field goals or a touchdown. And, and they've kind of had these second-half letdowns. It's been triggered by that. If you have a two-it back there, especially last week, the way Alex Collins ran through that defense, if you have a two-it out there, much better chance of shutting that down. Maybe you're not in the dime defense or the nickel defense so much. Maybe you're playing more base and shutting that down and getting some three and outs that you did in the first first half to kind of keep control of the game that they had at halftime. So I asked Mike Tom on this. I asked Matt Canada this. And my biggest gripe coming out of the game against Seattle from an offensive perspective was, my God, throw the ball beyond the sticks, please, on third down conversion situations. And the answer they keep coming back to is we got to do better on first and second down so we're not looking at so many third and nine, third and eight, third and 11 kind of situations. Okay, but especially with your offensive line and especially with the propensity that they have to take penalties, those things are going to exist. You can't like wish or will those out of existence. And even when you're playing well, especially when you start playing better teams, you're going to have third and longs. This never-ending reliance to want to throw the ball short of the first down marker and hope against hope that the wide receiver, who's usually in a standing position while catching the ball, by the way, is going to be able to restart, break tackles, and get beyond the sticks. It's just not working. I mean, I, I can't get beyond that stat where when they're 5 of 10 at one point in third down conversions. Of their five failures, they actually completed four passes. <laughs> You know, but they just couldn't get beyond the sticks once they caught the ball. And if you look at two of their conversions in that stretch, two of the conversions, they made it by a grand total of three yards. <laughs> like, so, like, they're barely falling across when they're getting there. I, they, they, the evolution of this offense just has to be a few plays when you're in third and not quite as manageable. Get beyond the chains. Yeah, it's, it's the baseball equivalent of when you've got a guy in second base and you get a hit with runners in scoring position, but it's an infield single when he stays at third. Yeah, you succeeded, but really, did you because you didn't get the run in? And that's what you're facing here with these, you know, continuing the th- third and short. You're completing the passes but you're not quite getting there. Now, I have no problem it, on occasion doing it, throwing short of the sticks, or using the right personnel to throw short of the sticks. Your best receiver at doing that now is on injured reserve and out for the year. You know, Juju was able to you know, force his way, get extra yards, get through tackles. You don't have that now. So now I think you've got to start looking to get more beyond the sticks, and, unless you're throwing to somebody like Deontay who, you know, who has a matchup that you'd like. But the issue I have is going back, you know, as we know several weeks ago, third and nine, fourth and nine, you're throwing two yards or you're throwing behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. You're know, trying to convert that way. That that won't work. You know, at least give but it a shot. But this is the residue down. of that. Like, you know, yeah. maybe, they, maybe they've tried to remedy those things on fourth downs. They finally learned their lesson. We haven't seen as many of them since then, too. We have to keep that in mind. But it's their tendencies as well. You know, you're right. If they were to have Deontay Johnson running a 15-yard post pattern on a third and five or a third and six, then, yeah, get it to him if he wins the matchup. But the defenses have figured out what their tendencies are. Yeah. And we've all long talked about other defenses doing the backwards thing of crowding the box to stop the pass. That's where I think it manifests itself the most as problems for the Steelers to deal with. Yeah, and, and you saw last year how teams figured this out. And you know maybe if the Steelers had a later bye week next year, because they got it, remember they got it moved up so early because of COVID, that maybe they could have done the self-analysis then and maybe figured some things out but I think they were so far deep into it and the schedule kept changing because of certain COVID situations they were unable to do so maybe that's the thing they they find out of all this this meeting of the minds and this trying to identify issues you know going through the bye week um, because yeah they, they can't keep you know teams are going to figure this out if they haven't already and you've got to throw something different at them. Last thing, we talked about the Browns already in the north you're going to keep an eye on the Bengals and the Ravens too? Yeah think so yeah i mean it's <laughs> the know, ravens <laughs> that was one of the more impressive statement wins of the nfl season what they did to the chargers yeah it really was i you know yeah the chargers are coming across country but they're hot they've got a quarterback that's going for you know a million yards a game you know you figure they're going to come in and and give them a good game if not maybe win it uh, but baltimore just 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 had their had its way with them and uh 
you know, it, you know, you know, the Chargers didn't show up, or Baltimore just kicked their butt. It, you know, a combination of both. But yeah, it was really impressive that what Baltimore's been able to do. Then when you figure the week before that, the way they came back and won that game, you know, Baltimore's real. It's you know, I didn't think that coming into the season. I thought they would be the third best team in the division. You know, they're they're jumping back up to the top spot, and uh, you know, and the Bengals too. They're they're, they're real enough to play well against the Bengals schedule. Yeah, yeah, and the Bengals are you know they're gonna. You know they're four and two now. If they win eight games, I don't think anybody'd be surprised with the you know what they have and the way their schedule sets up. There's a squirrel in the inside facility over here. Look, he's mad at us. He <laughs> thinks we're trespassing. Yeah, he's uh, checking us out. Wants to maybe he wants the scoop on what we're saying about the Steelers. Yeah, he's trying to get an early bet in on the uh, Browns game. <laughs> Steelers minus four. All right, <laughs> Joe, have a good weekend off. Yeah, well, I, I got this. Maybe I can give him some of these nuts from this. That's uh, right. He smells your granola bar. I think that's bar. what it. Yeah, he's he obviously wants it. <laughs>